So you may remember in the very first video showing the progress of this library, I did this. Side, left, side, left, side, right, side, right. Demonstrating how to play a WAV file with the library. But what if we could easily speed up or slow down that playback? That's what we're going to look at today. Let's crack on. Is that it? <sighs> So here we are, this is the code we'll be looking at. A couple of things to note, we've now got a repeat forever. In fact, I think that was actually already implemented, but I've never really talked about it too much, but setting this to repeat forever to true on this property of the WAV file, of the WAV object, will mean it will keep repeating. After it finishes, it will repeat and repeat and repeat forever until it drives you absolutely crackers or you unplug it. And then also I mentioned in the last episode that volume, which was currently a decimal, so between 0 or 0 0.5 was half volume, 1 was full volume, was changing to a percentage. So 100% would be full volume for that original sample sound. You can see I've got it set to 140, so I'm going 140% louder. So of this particular sample I've got, it was not at the fullest volume it could be. So I can boost that up a little bit if I want to in the software. If you go too high and go above its full volume and you'll get what you call what's called clipping and your sound will sound horrendous i've had a little bit of a play with this 150 was too much i got clipping 140 was fine so i set it up at 140 for the volume if i was to set that at 50 it would be half the original volume with 100 again just to remind you would be full of the normal volume of what that sample was sampled at and then we've got the one that we're actually talking about in today's episode the speed this was implemented in dacorio and it's now been implemented in the R2S library as well. So a speed of one would be the normal playback speed, which you've already heard at the start of the video. So if we were to change that to two and we recompile upload, we'll go and have a listen to that. Okay, here's a demo. Get ready to be incredibly annoyed. And there you go, if you like your WAV files played back sounding like Pinky and Perky. Um, not that I know who they are, I'm way too young. But if you do, that's the way to do it. So that's playing back at twice the speed. But this software actually will allow you to change the speed as the sound's playing. We don't have to just fix it at two and that's it, until the sound's played, uh, finished, we can actually dynamically change the playback as it's playing. Let's have a quick look at that and what hardware we'll need. In fact, you can see the hardware we'll need here. I've uh, actually, just for ease, let's just turn that off for a second, just get on the reset. God, Bennett. I've got a potentiometer here, hooked up as a variable, uh, as a voltage divider, uh, going into an analog input of the ESP32. And I've uh, added a little bit to the software, not much, to read that value, and depending on what voltages we're getting off that potential divider, will depend what vol what speed we set this at. So we can change the speed with this in real time as it's playing. Let's have a look at that. Oh, shut up. Right, here it is. Oh, the new longer, isn't it? So, I've took out the line that set the speed to two from this section here, if you might notice that. And then I've added a line here. For the speed in our main loop, which as you know, if you're very familiar with Arduino, with the Arduino environment and how the SP32 works within that, this is called over and over again. This is where your main code would run. So we have the normal fill buffering, which I mentioned over the last couple of videos. That is going, you won't need that at the end when the library is finished, but for now we do. So I'm setting the speed equal to this calculation. So I'm taking a read of that analog pin where the potential divider is connected. And that is pin 14 in my case, if we look up here, I've set that to pin 14 and that's where the middle of that potentiometer has been connected to with then the outer two sides of that potentiometer. So we have three connections. The outer two I've connected to positive and negative, doesn't matter which way around. And the middle one goes to your ADC pin. And then we can read the voltage between zero and about 3.1, 3.2 volts, something like that, that uh, will be fed into the ESP32. And that will be returned to us from analog read here as a number between zero and 4,095, I had to think for a minute then. You can actually change that with some extra code, but I've left it at the default for between zero and 4,095. So if I then divide that number by 1,024, I'll get a final value 
from that calculation, from this calculation, with a decimal between zero and four from that calculation. Just a quick note here, something that can catch people out. Uh, I need to convert that digital return from zero to 4,095 to a float first. I need to typecast it, that's called typecasting, to a float before doing this calculation. Otherwise, things won't go well. It won't do the calculation as we expect. We're expecting a decimal back. It would give us just an inch back. So to go from zero, one, two, three, four, in big jumps like that. That is a kind of a trap for young players there. Some people might find that a bit finickety. Some languages will work that out better. Um, other languages are even more strict on the types and variables you have, such as Ada. That's an interesting language according, which I did quite a few years ago. That is a heavily typed language, but an incredibly interesting language at the same time. You should have a look into it. But anyway, so we're going to call it. It's going to be called over and over again, as it would normally done, your main loop. And each time we're going to set the speed to whatever this value is. So let's have a quick look at how that sounds in practice. OK, so here's the hardware. All set out, as I showed you, with that potential divider, just providing a voltage to the SP32 on its AD, one of its ADCs, which will convert into that digital number which we saw. So let's let my finger off. I've actually preset this to be approximately the normal playback speed. Side. So left, let's slow it down. How low can we go? So that it's almost intelligible. In fact you can turn it right down and it'll basically stop playing. We'll start turning it up again and we'll start speeding up. Sounds a bit like a growling bear. Slowly speeding up. That's about normalish. Gonna go increasing. Then we can go up to four times the speed with this. And faster if you alter the code. So you'll see four times is plenty. And I'm just slowly turning this potentiometer. <laughs> up to the max that's the max and I said we can, we can notice very quickly in real time and do like a bit of mixing does that sound like but yeah so all in real time we can alter the speed as the wav bar is playing etc etc ok so that's altering the speed of this one particular wav but actually we could play, as you know, I did this in episode one, another wav at the same time, they will mix the signs together. But with this, you actually set the speed of individual wavs. So we can change the speed of this wav while we're playing another wav at its normal speed or any speed we want to set that at as well. And it will mix perfectly together. Let's have a look at the code for that. So here's the code. We have an extra... WAV file, we now have a blaster WAV, which again is stored in the sound data in that tab there. Just going back. So we've got the stereo left, right, left, right one, and we've got the blaster WAV, which we used in episode one of this series. We've also got a variable called time, 32 bit variable, and that's used to keep track of the millisecond clock on the ESP32. So yeah, so basically we've got two WAVs. We are setting off the left right wav first there, so that gets, that gets playing in the setup. We take an initial reading of the milliseconds, and then and that enables us every few seconds, in fact, it's one and a half seconds as denoted by this, this number here. Every one and a half seconds, it will fire the blaster sound. So imagine the time, it reads the millis, and let's say that's a thousand. It's a thousand milliseconds since the SB32 has been switched off, as it in one second. So it's set to a thousand in there. Then we come in here and we say, is the current setting, whatever it might be, this might be a thousand and one. 
Is 1,001 more than 1,000 plus 1,500? Well, it wouldn't be, would it? Because 1,000 plus 1,500 would be 2,500. So it's not going to go into this. So it's going to end up sitting there, checking that until the millis gets above uh, 2,500, which will mean 1,500 milliseconds have gone past, which is 1,500 seconds. So when that happens, we reset the time, first thing we do, and then we play the blaster sound. So that's just straightforward coding. So we're playing the blaster sound every one and a half seconds. And at the same time, we can alter the speed of this other WAV file. And they will both mix together. And this speed of the blaster won't change at all, just the speed of the one we want to. If we wanted to alter the blaster speed, of course, we could by setting its speed property to whatever we want to. So let's have a quick demo of that. So here we go, let's plug in. I can't remember what speed they set at. I think it's set at... Side, left. Normal. Left. So that's roughly set to the normal speed. And you can hear the blaster go in. Let's let you listen to that to a second to out me waffling. Side, 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 left, side, left, side, right. Okay, and then I'm going to alter the speed. We'll go faster. That's more fun. You can hear the blaster sound remains unchanged, but mixed in with the new faster left, right, left, right, wow, perfectly. Ultra, ultra fast, silly fast. But you can hear, wow file, unaffected. So in real time, it's mixing and adjusting the speeds of these two wow files, which you won't find, as far as I'm aware, in any other library. And for some special effects or whatever project might have, could be handy. So I've slowed that right down there, haven't I? Too much. Right. Right. There we go. You might hear a little bit of clicking. And I can certainly hear the clicking. Uh, that's because we're, we're uh, topping out at the top of the volume as the sound is mixing. And if you remember, I set the... Um, i just stop that for a second. If you remember, I set the left, right, left, right, right wav to 140% 100%, volume. And then when I'm mixing in, occasionally, the blaster sound is then causing that to uh, clip at the top of the range. So when you hear that happening, I mean, I should have really set it to 140%, being a bit adventurous. I know that was right at the tippy top as well. It was right at the limit, because any higher, and I would definitely get clipping of the sound. So yeah, it really should be 100, 120, something like that for this particular sound. They wouldn't hear that sort of a clicking. You might just hear it little clicks. Right, noise. And that'll solve that. Okay, that's it for now. Um, God, oh, for God's sake, let's just unplug it. But that's it for this episode. Hopefully, you'll see some good ideas for projects for yourself in what I'm doing using this library. This video, just as a quick reminder, is available on Odyssey with no adverts at all for Odyssey. So there'll be a link in the description. I might even put a link on screen if I can remember and get round to it to the actual my channel on Odyssey. Feel free to subscribe it on there and it's an absolute ad-free experience. No no pre-rolls, no post-rolls and actually even on YouTube I don't do mid-rolls. I completely disagree with them. They interfere particularly with my style of video completely. Not a good thing. So you'll never find mid-rolls on my videos. Hope you appreciate that. If you do, you could always whack a like on there, couldn't you? And shove that on his mic. Hand in frame, yeah, just about. It looks ultra massive there, doesn't it? Or even better, you can subscribe. If you feel like patronising me, you can find a link to my Patreon, 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 Patreon account down below. Thanks for those that already do. And of course, I usually say that, yeah, I get plenty of patronising comments in the comments. But that's it for now. Thank you, as always, very much for watching.